Well, we're here at the Holderfield Family Reunions, July 4th, 1986, visiting with uh, Janet Holderfield. And Janet, uh, what is your, your full name? Uh, Janet Lorraine Thompson Holderfield. Your maiden name was Thompson. Right. Uh, what is your birth date? Uh, 2, 9, and 25. Okay. Uh, where were you born? In uh, Casper, Wyoming. Uh, what are the your your mother and father's full names? Uh, my dad's name is Jack Thompson, and my mother's name is Mina Dora Thompson. Uh, and there might be something quite interesting there. My mother is uh, Polish, and no Russian. Her dad came from Russia when he was 17 years old and he married my mother's mother in um, Chicago. And then they moved to Wyoming and worked in the coal mines. Mm -hmm. So that's quite, really quite interesting. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, when was your mother born, do you know? Uh-huh, she was born in 1899. What's her birthday? Uh, May 6th. Okay, once again, your mother was born in... 1899. Do you know her date of birth, month and day? May the 6th. May the 6th. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know the year that your dad was born? No, I'm not real sure about that. Was no, he... His birthday's in August, but I can't... He uh, was older, probably about five years older than my mother. I see. Uh, your mother is still living today. Yes, she was uh, 87 years old on, in May. And when was your dad, when did he pass away? Uh, about 10 years ago. About 10 years ago. Is he buried in Oklahoma? Yes, he's buried in Ada. Ada. Uh, does your mother uh, live in Ada? Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know any information about uh, your grandparents? No, just other than... The only grandparent I had was that I knew about was my mother's father, and he yeah. lived in Wyoming. My mother's mother had passed on before I was ever born, so I didn't ever have a grandmother on her side of the family. Now, my father's um, mother and father, I knew them. They lived in Wyoming also. Uh, what brought you from Wyoming to Oklahoma? The oil patch. Did your parents? Your, your, my mother, my dad worked uh, for Sinclair Oil Company, and they transferred him during the boom to um, Seminole. How old were you at that time? Mm, about four. Yeah. Between so four and five. This would have been uh, just before the depression. Yes. Okay. Um, do you have any sisters or brothers? I have a sister that lives in California. What is her name? It's my, uh, she's my half-sister. Her name is Madge Thompson. When you were growing up, um, were you and your sister close? No, because she left home, left Oklahoma when she was 17 years old. I see. She's eight years older than I am. And she's been away from home the minute she graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. um, how did you come to know the Holderfield family? <laughs> well, that's quite interesting. Uh, Leon was supposed to be in the... Okay, the question was, how did you uh, come to know the Holderfield family? Well, there was a place on the highway that we danced. I had Nickelodeon, and all the young people went up there to dance. But Leon was supposed to be in Ada at the church camp meeting. And he slipped off and came back to Seminole and saw me out to this dance place and wanted to take me home that night. But the funny thing about it, he just had about six boys in the car with him and he wanted <laughs> to take me home. I said, no way. How old were you in the man? 17. So how old was he? 20. 20. Um, 
so you met at a dance and uh, he called on you after that? Oh yes, he came. I didn't think I'd ever see him, you know, how boys are, you know, uh, just be on his way. Just, just wanted to do something honorary, I think. And But he showed up on Sunday. He said he made a date with me for Sunday and he showed up. And where, then we, where'd y'all go? Probably church. <laughs> no, I think with the show. Uh, let's see. Uh, when were you married? In uh, June, 1942. The 13th. Um, the thing about it is, um, that's when uh, Japan burnt, uh, bombed Pearl Harbor mm -hmm. in December. <laughs> and, uh, of course, we probably wouldn't have got married at the time, but, you know, needless to say, you think, oh, he's gone off and I'll never see him again. So we got married in June, and he went into the service ten days later. Mm -hmm. But he never did have to leave the United States. He got a medical discharge after he'd been in the Army about, Air Force, about 18 months. I see. So we were you all separated to, for some time? Oh, about a month or so, and I went out to Albuquerque where... We lived for the 18 months. Where did y'all get married? In, uh, we woke up. We woke up, yeah. Was it the church way? Oh, the secret is we eloped. <laughs> well, there's a lot the of that. The secret is out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you were how old when you eloped? 17, 18? 17. 17. Uh, what did uh, your, your father think about that when he found out? Oh, they both were hired. Were they? They uh, wanted me to, you know, finish school. I was a junior, and they wanted me to finish school. And I promised them I would. And then we went to Albuquerque. Why I did, I enrolled in school and finished school in Albuquerque. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, you have two girls, uh, Kathy and Paula. Uh, after Uncle Leon got out of the Air Force, uh, did he immediately come back to, to Ada? Ooh. We went to uh, Pampa, Texas, because that's where his mother was, and that's where Burnley was. So nothing, and Tommy was there, so nothing must do that we have to move to Pampa. Mm -hmm. Both of us hated it with a passion because the wind blew constantly. And he had a good job with Shell Oil Company, but we just couldn't stand it. We had to move to Seminole. And who did he go to work for there? Um, he went to work for a Love Petroleum Company. Worked for quite a while there. And um, the man that owned the Love Petroleum Company, he and his wife got killed. And they changed hands, so Leon quit Love Petroleum and had a station there in Ada, I mean in Seminole, and then we moved to Henrietta. He went to work for the glass plant there. Then Did you have any children at this time? Yes. Kathy was born in 1945. Okay, and this was better than when, 19? Mm -hmm. It was after that. Probably 1948, somewhere along in there. Uh, how long did uh, it was 1949 because Paula was born in 1950 well how long was it before you got back to Ada what I'm trying to find out is uh, how you got to where you eventually ended up Paula was born in um, when she was a year old we moved back to Seminole and then we moved from Seminole to Ada in 1953. When did uh, Uncle Leon, or how did he come by owning Service Pump and Supply? Uh, he went to work for uh, Dewey Supply Company, and uh, Dewey Bartlett was um, going to run for governor of Oklahoma, and that's who Leon worked for. And he um, 
asked Mel if he wanted to buy the store, and he said he'd make it easy for him. So he and another fellow that worked for him bought the store. And then about three years later, Leon bought the other partner out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this was in the 50s? Mm -hmm. About probably 56, somewhere along in there, 57. Because we moved where we live now, we've lived there. Um, 18 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what was Kathy's birthday? September the 9th, 1945. And what is her full name? Catherine Louise Holderfield. I'll shut that off. Um, how did you come about naming Kathy? She's named after my sister's middle name, and um, the Louise was a friend of ours that we played cards with in mm -hmm. Seminole. And of course, Kathy has one daughter, Trina Michelle, uh, who is what, 18? Will be 18 in August. Uh, your second child is Paula. Paula Kay. Uh, when was she born? January the 1st, 1950. She was a new baby. Baby. baby of the decade. Right. Uh, how did you come about naming her? At random. Just. We just chose Paula and thought Kay would be a good name that went with it. Okay. Um, Uncle Leon has been uh, dead now for, uh, what, four years? Four years. Okay. Uh, can you explain the circumstances around his death, How what uh, you think led up to it, that sort of thing? Well, not really. I think it's just like um, everything else. He just had a massive coronary, and uh, there wouldn't have been anything any one person could have done. The only regrets I have is that he wouldn't go to the hospital to start with. Uh -huh. When his arm was hurting real bad and he was sick in his stomach, he wouldn't let me take him to the hospital. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised because he'd been the doctor earlier if he hadn't tried to put him in the hospital. And Leon had been in the hospital so much, he just wouldn't go. Uh -huh. uh. Talked him out of it and told him he'd be there Monday. Uh -huh. Uh, had he, uh, I guess you say he's been he's been feeling bad. Uh, I don't think Leon really felt good. I think his legs bothered him a lot, and, but I don't think he just felt real bad. You know, like sick, but he didn't feel that sharp. The night before he was out cutting rose bushes. Mm -hmm. Friday night before he passed away, so. He could have been feeling just all that bad. Um, I want to kind of let you go on your own now, and if you can tell us about any fond remembrances of the Holderfell family and of Uncle Leon in particular, or uh, anything that you, you two shared that you think that might be interesting to your kids and grandkids. Well, the, they, the kids want me to tell, of course, they've just heard it. They wanted me to tell about the first time that the, we called them the clan came out to Albuquerque when Leon was in the service. They came out in the old black Chevrolet, and there was Vera and Faye, and um, I believe it was Bernie, and Carolyn, and Patsy, and Barbara. And they had chickens tied on the back of this old car. And what we lived in was one room. Now, can you imagine <laughs> trying to get all those people in one room? <coughs> they rented a, a cabin down in what they call old, old Albuquerque, and that's where they stayed. And they got scared and went home. <laughs> they How long did they stay home. there? I think they stayed two nights, but they got scared and went home. <laughs> and I want to say this, that... Um, down through the years, Leon was always crazy about the kids. Mm -hmm. 
to start with we had Barbara we sent started Barbara in at school before uh, Vera and Vern could get moved and uh, we were just you know really close to the kids mm -hmm. and then there was um, Marvin Lee he lived with us and he loved apples and if I ever brought any apples home from the store and you know would hide them He'd sniff those apples out above everything and let me bake a chocolate cake and he'd tear the house up until we found it. <laughs> and Bob stayed with us. And then Stephen always wanted to come back and visit with us in the summer when he got out of school. And there was another little boy that always loved to come back and stay with us. And the first time we took him home, back to Pampa, Texas, and his name was Rodney. He looked at this sign and he says, Oh, there's some Anacues. <laughs> and from this day on, we've always called them Anacues after Rodney. <laughs> we never go buy anything that we don't call them Anacues. We've had a lot of good times. We've had a lot of camping trips, but Leon always enjoyed all the kids. Anybody that he could get, any little boy, that's what he'd do. He has been known to take a child off the street and take them in and get them a haircut. And if the shoes didn't look good, he'd go buy a pair of shoes. That was one of his pet peeves, a haircut and shoes. That's one thing they had to have. So. Hmm. Uh, how many years were you, were you married? We would have had our 40 20 in the first ring in June before he, after he passed away. We married 40 years. Well, I'm sure, you know, in, in every... Uh, Every marriage, there's there's good days and bad days, and and uh, no different than anybody else. But uh, I think Uncle Leon, by and large, is uh, is responsible for our, our annual reunion, and uh, at his uh, funeral, uh, you know, I think it was very appropriately put that you know. Uh, He'll be dearly missed by numerous favorite nieces and nephews, and and I am proud to say that I'm one of them. Uh, do you think he would be happy, you know, if he were here today with everybody? Oh, I know he would. He would. He would be so proud of everybody. Just and you know, like um, we always wonder, you know, why something like that happens. Mm -hmm. But down the way somewhere we'll probably know somehow or other why it happened like it did but um, and I also missed another one that was in my home too a lot and that was Carolyn um, after the girls got up in school I know you worked uh, went to work at the bank and uh, are you still working at the bank? no I retired I was Went to work for the, at the bank when Kathy graduated from high school. That was her. And I knew right then and there that one of these days I was going to be by myself at home while Leon worked all day. And I wasn't going to have enough to keep me busy because my kids would be gone. So I decided rather than wait until I got older, I found me a job. And I worked for First National Bank 22 years. And when did you retire? Um, Two years ago. And uh, two years ago this month. What have you been doing for the last two years to keep yourself busy? <laughs> <laughs> well, traveling. I've been to California a couple of times and been to Alaska. And we take a trip every year on the girls' vacation. We travel one year. We travel 5,000 miles. And Leon left me well. Prepared with the motor home and the boat, and we've we've enjoyed it. We didn't think we could, but we have. Um, I know that uh, the sisters that are left out of the, the original Holderfield Seven, that uh, you're very close to all of them. And, yeah, I've always been. Uh, you've always been all more. You, you've always been more or less one of the sisters rather than. Uncle Leon's wife, right. and uh, they think of you that way, and I think you do of them. What are you? 
what are your earliest recollections of these Holderfield women? <laughs> well, to me, uh, Vera was always older, than, you know, to what she really was to me. And uh, Merlou would come up from Pampa when we were living there before Lyle and I ever got married. And uh, she was a ride. I always thought about her. And uh, then we all, I never was very close to Esty, but Tommy and I were the ones that were really the closest because we ran around together all the time. Mm -hmm. In wow. fact, when Leon and I weren't even going together that much, um, we ran around together all the time. Tommy says I was her girlfriend because I wanted Leon, and I thought <laughs> that wasn't true. <laughs> yeah. but, Tommy and I have always had a lot of fun. Is there anything else that you want to add, uh, that you want to say, or uh, any other information that you can give us as far as uh, your heritage or Uncle Leon's heritage that, uh, say, Trina's kids might want to? Somebody. Well, the only thing that um, I'll say is the one trait that he got after from his mother was his ability to make everybody feel like they were the most important person at that time. Mm -hmm. And Mom, when any of the kids walked in the door at her home, they were number one. And they went home feeling they were number one. And you can ask any of the grandchildren to this day, and they'll say, my grandmother loved me best of all. <laughs> I'm number one. But that's the way she was, and that's the way Leon was. I think that's true, too. And you can ask anyone right now, and they'll tell you they're Uncle Leon's favorite. Uh, I wouldn't disagree with you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aunt Janet, thank you very much. and uh, I think this will be very beneficial to... Oh, I think so, too, and I think future. it's a great idea. Thank you. Lake Texoma Reunion. This is uh, 